so hi and hello there welcome to the new video of the course and in this session we are going to see the internal structure or the construction of jfet but before moving to the construction part of the jfet uh, we need to revise uh, two different concepts that we had learned in two different uh, courses so in the second course if you could remember in semiconductors we had learned one concept that was intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors okay and in th uh, fourth course we learn uh, about uh, construction of bipolar junction transistor there i told to you all guys that generally whenever we are designing any or basically whenever we are constructing uh, any electronic oriented component we make use of semiconductor okay so specific specifically we always make use of extrinsic semiconductor and the reason we had discussed in the uh, semiconductor course why because uh, extrinsic with the help of extrinsic semiconductor we can yield better result or we get better result with the help of extrinsic semiconductor uh, extrinsic semiconductor as compared to the uh, int intrinsic semiconductor okay great and in case of uh, bipolar junction transistor if you could remember what exactly we were doing so basically in that course we saw the basic working of transistor so what we saw was that just by altering or just by changing the input parameters that is vbe and ib we were able to get the magnified form or basically we were able to control the output current okay or we although we are getting although we were getting the magnified form of the current okay why because the input current was in microamperes and at the output side we were getting the output current that is ic which was in milliamperes okay but with uh, just by changing the input current that is just by changing the ib we were able to control the output current okay on the similar note uh, we need to design or basically we need to construct this jfet in such a way that just by changing the input parameters of jfet we should be able to control the output parameter so this is our main agenda while designing any transistor okay so this is the basic idea to design any transistor right so researchers who uh, developed or who constructed this jfet they had one idea uh, so i hope you might have seen uh, or you might have you know experienced this particular thing let me just move this uh, over here i'll let you know what exactly it is let me just move this somewhere over here all right so let's assume let's assume you have one pipe that which is made up of plastic okay so you have one pipe which is made up of plastic okay and from this particular pipe what the water is flowing okay water water is flowing and let's assume uh, now this particular pipe uh, let's assume the diameter or uh, you know everything it is constant uh, of this particular pipe and let's suppose the water the water that you are fetching to the input of this particular pipe it is coming after some time and let's assume uh, it like one liter of water takes at least uh, uh, maybe one minute to come out of this particular pipe great and now what i did is that see just uh, by applying certain force to this particular pipe just by applying certain force to this particular pipe from both of the side i am able to decrease the speed of the water okay so let me just show you over here so just a second let me show it properly okay so now that i had applied certain force f on both of the sides so i am applying a constant for a uh, uh, constant force f on both of the side of the pipe so now the water which is flowing over here uh, the speed of the water gets decreased and now the same one liter of uh, water which i am immersing from this end or which i am uh, fetching from this particular end uh, it is taking time uh, of two minutes to come from the other end so as you can see uh, the time increases uh, but the uh, amount of water remains constant why because why the time increases because we had uh, reduced the diameter or just by applying certain force we are controlling the speed of water okay on this similar note what scientists or what researchers thought what if we could design a transistor wherein, wherein we can control the transistor in this way okay what was happening in bipolar junction transistor was if you could remember the collector emitter uh, junction okay no sorry collector based junction it was behaving in that manner but uh, if you could remember it was not that efficient it was not that efficient that uh, session only we discussed right so that's why researchers or scientists thought okay we should design one transistor in such a way that uh, we can uh, see if you could see we can squeeze this particular pipe okay we can by applying the force we are changing the or basically we are distur uh, uh, disturbing the structure of the pipe okay on the similar note what if we could design a transistor wherein it can disturb the internal structure and thus it can control the uh, uh, flow of charge okay and by flow of charge what exactly i mean is that 
we can actually control the current okay output current to be precise that we will see in the upcoming session okay so i hope this uh, you got the idea what exactly uh, was the thought process while designing this particular transistor okay great now what we are going to do see as i told you in the semiconductor course as well that uh, for designing an electronic components we require extrinsic semiconductor and when i talk about extrin extrinsic semiconductor so that means what i'm talking about doping two type two different types of materials okay and that materials when it comes to semiconductors and that materials are uh, n type material and p type material okay so since we are dealing with n channel jeffet so i will just explain you the very first uh, topic that is n channel jeffet so since you are dealing with n channel jeffet so what i will do is that i will take this n channel okay or n type material n type material and then what i will do is that real and i will do p type in it in such a way that uh, just by applying the uh, or just by changing the input parameter i can actually control the output current okay so let me just show you how exactly we are fabricating it or we are constructing it okay in this way so as you can see over here if i apply certain you know if i change certain uh, uh, input parameter so this particular p type it will uh, p type material it will change its shape and the moment it will change its shape so if you could see very clearly just a second let me just give you a basic idea so let's assume if these are your electrons okay if you could remember in the previous session we deal uh, uh, like i saw that uh, i uh, uh, i just told you that uh, in n channel jeffet the majority charge carriers are electrons okay so uh, uh, if if uh, let's suppose if 10 electrons are moving from this particular uh, channel as you can see from this particular small area okay if 10 electrons are moving okay and now what i did i just changed the input parameters and depending upon that the uh, this particular p type region it got changed okay it got changed maybe it got uh, increased or maybe it got decreased okay so if it increases so the see if it increases so the amount of electron passing through this particular uh, channel or passing through this particular small area or oh, sorry this area it gets decreased okay if if this p type uh, uh, material or region if it gets decreased right so the amount of electrons passing through this particular channel it will be increasing okay and gradually it will you know, uh, uh, decrease or increase the current respectively okay i hope you are getting this point so basically according to researchers what they did just by keeping this p type material over here and here so this is your p type material and this is your n type material okay and just by changing the parameters input parameters they were able to control the charge flowing through this particular channel and once if the charge gets controlled according to your desire desire or according to your will so that means what you are able to control the current okay so i hope now you got the idea that why exactly it was constructed in this way great now we are on the right track and now we can actually expand this discussion further but again we will go in the working part in the upcoming session so you need not to worry about that particular part okay i hope you understood uh, like why exactly or what was the thought process beha behind designing or behind constructing this jfed in this way great so now we will proceed further and if you could see this is how the internal structure of jfet looks like okay so this is your n n n type material this is your this are the two p type materials okay great and let me just uh, write over here this is your uh, gate oh, sorry this is your gate this is your drain okay so what we did over here is that we just took out four different terminals okay from this uh, uh, internal structure of jfet okay if you could remember in case of bjt so the, if this if this was your bjt if this was your n pn so you took out three different terminals okay so this was emitter this was base and this was collector right on the similar note uh, from the jfet as well we are taking four different terminals now you will ask me sir but you told that uh, jfet only has three uh, three terminals and that are gate source and drain so from where this four terminal came i will uh, explain you the reason first let me just write the uh, name of the terminal so this is my drain okay this is my drain this is the gate of the jfet and the lower one it is a uh, source grid okay and now you'll ask me sir what is this four terminal what is the name of the four terminal the four terminal it is known as body or substrate it is known as body or substrate body or substrate okay some people call it as substrate some people call it as body but generally i think substrate is also referred in mosfet so don't get confused okay uh, 
uh, in JFET, this four terminal, it is known as body. So I'll suggest keep the uh, just uh, focus on body. Don't go with substrate and, substrate and all. Okay, great. And I uh, will come to the to come to your point, or I will come to your doubt. If you could see very clearly, I had shorted the gate and the body. What does that means? That means that see, I had intentionally shorted this, and the reason is just a second. Yeah, and the reason is internally the JFET it is shorted. I mean the body and the gate terminal of JFET it is shorted in this way. Now you will ask me, sir, that's fine, it is shorted, but what is the reason to short this particular gate and body? Is there any reason, or it is uh, just like that only? No, there is a very significant reason for it. See. Let's assume if you could remember in case of BJT again, let me draw the uh, symbol. I will just draw the symbol of BJT. What we were doing, we were actually providing certain input voltage V in, and depending on that, like by changing the input voltage, we were changing the input current. And once the input current was changing, so the output current IC, which was beta times of IB, that was also changing. Why? Because our IC was dependent on IB, and now our IB is dependent on V in. So with the help of input voltage we were able to control the input current okay or in other words with the help of input current with, uh, we were able to uh, uh, control the output current okay on the similar note let's suppose if i'm applying the input voltages uh, let me take different color uh, let us say if i'm applying the input voltage as v in okay if i'm applying the input voltage as v in okay so according to this input voltage this p type material as i told you earlier over here also the p type material will change i mean the size of the p-type material will change. Let's assume the uh, let's assume the p-type uh, the size of p-type material. From this, it got changed to this something like this. Okay. And now that we had shorted, so over uh, over here as well, this uh, this uh, terminal that is body, uh, we will get input voltages V in. Why? Because this terminal it is shorted internally, and therefore the p-type material will expand in this way. Okay. Great. That means what if you could say very clearly we had actually decreased the n channel okay if we had decreased the n channel so the number of electrons passing through this channel it will be less and if the number of electrons passing through this channel if it becomes less that means what that means we are uh, you know uh, restricting the flow of current or basically the flow of current will get decreased so this is how we can control the flow of current okay but that's not important thing then what is important thing the important thing to notice over here is that see Let's assume if I'm not uh, shorting this, just a second, if I'm not shorting this uh, gate and body. So if I'm uh, giving uh, the voltage V into the gate terminal, okay, and at gate terminal, let's assume the P type region, it got expanded in this way. Again, it, it will get expanded in this way. But if you, if you could see at body, you are getting, uh, you are not getting any voltage. So this particular P type material will remain as it is. And now we won't be able to what we won't be able we won't be able to control the current because see in the previous case if you could remember only one electron was passing but now although the flow of electrons get restricted but now four electrons can pass so basically the uh, uh, flow of current increases uh, or it got increased as compared to the previous case where in previous case what we did we, when we shorted gate and body we were actually passing only one electron right but now we are just we are passing four more electrons as compared to the previous case so uh, this was the drawback okay and that's why internally the jfd is shorted so that we we can get a symmetrical shape or a symmetrical expansion or a dec a declinement in the uh, p type region okay and thus we can easily control the uh, output current so let me just show these uh, shorted thing i mean shorted uh, wire yeah so let me write over here uh, just a second uh, yeah the body and the the gate and the body is uh, the uh, gate and the body terminal it is shorted and the body terminal gate and the body terminal is shorted is shorted so because of two reason uh, because just a second so that I'll write in this way so that when we provide certain voltage when we provide when we provide certain voltage when we provide certain just a second when we provide certain voltage to gate to gate terminal to gate terminal 
the same voltage gets reflected at the body terminal the same voltage the same voltage voltage gets reflected the same voltage gets reflected at the body terminal at the body terminal okay the same voltage gets reflected at the body terminal and if the same voltage gets reflected at the body terminal so the expansion of the p type or maybe decline declination of p type gets uh what i can say it, it it becomes symmetrical okay on both of the sides so let me write over here so the expansion just a second yeah so the expansion 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 and uh declination declination or increment and decrement of p type material p type material material becomes uh, uh, symmetrical becomes symmetrical symmetrical and at the same time and most importantly and it happens it happens at the at same time okay at same time that means what say if if this particular p type material p type material uh, which is present near the gate if it is increasing in uh, at time t is equals to one second so at time t is equals to one point maybe at one second this uh, p type material at the body it will also increase so as you can see there is hardly any delay okay so without any delay it is increasing okay great so i hope understood this particular point at same time same time okay same time okay and so the main reason for this is yeah so it is done to control the uh it is uh uh like done or p type material uh uh is present at both of the side in such a way that they are parallel to each other and the sideways of the n channel they are doped in such a way by it is done to uh what is done to control the current in more efficient way control the uh, charge level right as of now we won't be focusing on the current it is done to control the charge in much more and much more efficient way in much more efficient way efficient effi sorry effi just a second efficient way sorry efficient way okay so i hope you understood that why exactly we are you know uh, uh, doping this p type material in this way and obviously why we are actually shorting this gate type gate terminal and body terminal okay i hope you understood this, this particular concept in depth great uh, so remember one thing uh, whenever i talk about p type so i will pref always prefer to represent it with a light blue color and when I whenever i will talk it uh, talk about uh, this n type material i will always prefer to represent it with a uh, uh, light red color okay Okay, great. So I hope you understood the concept of N channel J fit, how exactly it is fabricated or constructed. Now we will focus on P channel J fit. Again, the reason is same. Uh, why we are actually uh, connecting, uh, uh, you know, N uh, N material at the sideways of the P type uh, material. So again, let me just show you over here. This is the P type material, P type material, and at the sideways we are doping N type material in this way. See over here. So at the sideways we are doping uh, uh, N type material. So let me just show it over here. This is my uh, uh, P type material. Oh, just a second. This is my P type material, and at the sideways we have N type material. Great. We have N type material. Great. So let me check if I had uh, yeah written over here. All right, but uh, I just forgot to let uh, to just explain you this thing that now you may think that sir, but we were doing the same thing in the BGT as well. This is P, this is N, this is P, right? So we have PNP BGT transistor. In case of NPN, we have this that is N, P, N. So we don't see any difference, my dear students. There is a big difference. If you could see over there, the N channel was small, okay, and over here, there here, the N channel is large, okay. Over here, the N channel is large. Whereas the in the case of BJT the collector emitter area it was you know somewhat equivalent although although the emitter area was much more large as compared to collector but again the difference was almost negligible on the similar note over here 
if you could see the this p type region okay if you could compare this and this this p type and this p type with this one and uh, first thing is that this p type uh, just a second this p type in case of jfit they, this is internally shorted okay and in case of bjt they they weren't they were they were not internally shorted okay okay i hope you are getting this particular point so there is a big difference between jfit and uh, bjt so please don't try to think in this way that uh, uh, this is pnp and even in jfit this is uh, pnp and all no it's not like that uh, there is a uh, uh, you know very huge difference which i just uh, showed to you now because me being a student i also used to think in this way but you know gradually when i started to go in depth of jfit so i came to know the small small things okay great all right so we'll uh, start with jumbo here so this was our p type material this was our n type material which we had doped in p type and the reason is same in case of p type we have holes right so just a second let me show it with blue color in case of uh, p type materials we have holes okay so to restrict the flow of holes uh, uh, we will change the input parameter and by changing the input parameter this n type material either it will expand or it will get declined okay if it get expand so the flow of current will re get reduced if it gets declined or if it gets decremented the flow of current will increase why because the now more number of charge carriers uh, charges will flow from this particular area okay i hope you understood this particular part and similarly over here as i told you in the uh, jfet uh, sorry n channel jfet uh, the upper one it is my drain terminal i mean it is the drain terminal of the jfet this is the gate terminal of jfet and this is the uh, source terminal of jfet this is the body uh, the body and the gate is internally grounded i had explain you the reason why exactly it is internally grounded okay uh, if you want you can again uh, read this particular sentences okay and uh, yeah now we will focus on the symbol as i told you in the previous session only that uh, i will explain you the symbol this the meaning of the arrow okay in the previous video only we discussed that this arrow does not see, uh, uh, represent the flow of current it represents certain different thing okay just focus on n channel jfet so if you could say in case of n channel jfet in the case of n channel jfet the arrow is pointing in this direction the arrow is pointing in this particular direction okay that is it is moving from left to or right if you could see very clearly it is going from uh just a second yeah it, it is moving from left to right okay and i'll just draw one uh line in this way oh sorry uh just draw one line in this way if you could see it is drawn in this way okay it is drawn something like this okay now uh come over here to the n channel jfet if you could if you could just focus over here p and n type okay if you could just focus over here just neglect this particular part just neglect this particular part for a moment just focus on this one just focus on this one and try to imagine this as a diode so if you try to imagine this as a diode so diode will look uh, or the symbol of diode would be in this way see this is your p type and this is your n type so if you could remember this was your p type and this was your n type and on the similar note if you see the symbol of jfet it looks something like this only okay it looks something like this only if you look the symbol of jfet okay so over here in case of jfet this is your p type and this is your n type and now i hope that you understood that why uh, this arrow it is you know drawn in this particular direction okay this is because we assume that this will act as a diode or this particular region internally if you could see if you couldn't check it is acting as a diode it is acting as if it is a diode okay let me erase this first because whenever you will refer the pdf you should not get confused okay so uh yeah if if you try to compare it with diode so it will look something like this only okay this is your p type this is your n type okay on the similar note the jfet if you could see on the left side you have p region on the right side you have n region okay so if we draw this arrow in such a way why because we assume that this uh the channel which is present from le uh, at the extreme left and in the middle it is acting as a diode okay so that's why we prefer to draw this arrow in this way okay it specifies the region okay so whenever you see this arrow in, the, uh, uh, in this way so you should always remember that we are talking about n channel jfet and when it comes to p channel jfet uh, so again if you could see very clearly 
the internal structure of pitch and jfet just neglect this particular part and just focus on this one if you could see uh and if i try to assume this as a diode so i am supposed to draw it in this way this is n and this is p okay so as you can see this arrow like symbol it is pointing out it is pointing out so uh, let me just show over here this is p and this is n okay so if you try to compare it with uh, jfet so it will look uh, something like this only so the arrow will come out do uh, this arrow uh, will come out okay and this will be your sorry this will be your jfet something like this and this arrow it will, it will come out okay but but over here we are not showing this particular uh, line okay because we won't be focusing uh, that much over there I mean uh, the concepts of diode and all but if you could see very clearly over here uh, just a second yeah so this particular arrow it is moving from it is moving from right to left just a second yeah if you could see this arrow it is moving from right to left okay and this uh, specifies as if it is acting as a, a diode okay that is the p type it is present to the right side and the n type it is present at the left side okay and that's the reason uh, why the symbol has this kind of arrow okay so i really hope that you understood the concept and you enjoyed this session as well okay so we'll quickly revise the things that we had studied so oh but before that let me erase this okay so if you could remember at the starting we saw the uh, that uh, as i told you that n type material it is doped with p type okay and um, the p type they they are uh, doped in such a way that as if they are parallel to each other and why they are doped in such a way because whenever we change the input parameter so the p type material the size of p type material changes and thus by changing the size of p type material okay we try to uh, you know uh, change we try to uh, change the flow of uh, or sorry we try to restrict the flow of uh, charges right so if you could see very clearly we try to imagine this particular situation as if uh, we have one plastic uh, or sorry we have one a pipe which is made up of hard plastic uh, not hard as such and a uh, little soft okay or maybe of polymer and we are trying to uh, apply certain force on that particular pipe so try to imagine this, this particular scenario over here okay and that's why we had added p type material at the sideways of n type okay or we had doped this p type material at the sideways of n type great and then what we did is this see uh then we took out certain uh, four terminals and then we saw uh, then we uh, saw that gate was internally connected to body and the reason was that this see the gate and body t uh, terminal is sorted so that when we provide certain voltage to the gate terminal the same voltage gets reflected to the body that means we will get same uh, voltage v in over here okay let me erase this all right and due to this what is going to happen so the expansion and the declination of p type material becomes symmetrical and it happens at the same time so whatever the p type material uh, whatever the expansion that will take place in the p type material at the gate terminal and at the uh, body terminal that would be at the same time and most importantly it would be symmetrical and once if it is symmetrical so you know the charge uh, the uh, you know you can actually control the charge in much more efficient way okay so that was the that was the uh, uh, ma major reasons that why we uh, internally short the gate and body terminal great so uh, same thing we saw with p channel jeffrey and over here as well we uh, you know short the gate and the body terminal okay and then at the end we saw the uh, symbol and the significance of this arrow what does this arrow try to represent so at the end we saw that this arrow try to represent the diode okay as if p type because and in n channel jeffrey the p type is present at extreme left and n channel at the center right similarly with p channel jfet the n type is present at extreme left and p channel in the middle okay so that's the reason why we uh, are showing this arrow uh, in the symbol in this okay i really hope that you understood each and every concept that we discussed uh, you, you also enjoyed this session okay so uh, if you have any doubts feel free to ask me at any time okay so i'm uh, ending this video over here thank you for listening to me patiently thank you